Hello, everyone. This is the mind of Lilith, and thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. So, for this podcast, I'm going to read you guys an old 1996 article from the Tampa Bay Times titled Farrakhan Acts to Accept One Billion Dollar Gift from Libya. This story is relevant to the ADOS reparations conversation that we've been having over the past six, seven, eight years. And in the past, you guys know that I've stated that while I do believe ADOS have the right to receive reparations for the protracted war of genocide being waged against us, I don't think the U.S. government wants to or will give ADOS any substantial compensation. And I don't think ADOS should prioritize lump sum cash payments. I think lump sum cash payments will be treated like lottery winnings. And we know what happens when most people receive large unearned lump sum payments. We tend to squander it. And this is not a race issue. This is the nature of humanity. So I do believe that reparations should be given in the form of land, gold, and silver, not cash payments. The U.S. dollar has $33 trillion of debt attached to it. Why would you ask for cash payments when the money isn't worth anything? So, the current discourse about reparations shows our ignorance about the purpose of socioeconomic warfare. Indigenous people around the world weren't enslaved and colonized by Europeans just because of their complexion or their language or their body types. We were enslaved to use our energy to build an economic infrastructure that is designed to effectively facilitate the extraction of energy and resources from all organisms, including the land. So our slave labor was used to build more complex systems of slavery that don't rely on animal husbandry or human oppression. The colonial project wasn't just about conquering the land. It was about conquering the people whose matriarchal cultures were not oriented to the patriarchal agenda of stratification, enslavement, and exploitation. The Southern plantations were re-education camps. We were enslaved for generations to wipe away the collective memory of our ancient traditions and customs, which were family, God, nature, and cosmically aligned, and thus not oriented to the terminal plane of the elites to suck the life out of this entire planet and discard it like a dead carcass. So we had to be trained to think like slaves, whose sole purpose for existing was to be used by these institutions who harvest and store human energy like batteries. And this is one of the reasons why even today, Black culture is utilized to promote capitalism internationally. Whitney Houston's beautiful voice wasn't just used to connect people to God in their own divinity. She was used as a battery to make energy vampires rich while promoting so-called American exceptionalism, which is nothing but a shopping mall and warfare. So anyway, why would the U.S. government give black Americans reparations, which would liberate us from a system that depends on our participation as consumers? Black Americans were encouraged, a.k.a. forced, to economically integrate into the system by abandoning our socioeconomic sovereignty as business owners, educators, practitioners, etc. Jim Crow was as much about economic sabotage as it was about psychological terrorism. Business owners were being lynched. Thriving and prosperous communities were being burned down because the powers that be were petrified that black Americans would create a human centered economic system that would compete against theirs. This is the early 20th century. So the Monroe Doctrine doesn't just prohibit military intervention from foreign countries in the Americas. This policy also applies to countries within the hemisphere. Just ask Jamaicans, Guatemalans, Nicaraguans, Venezuelans, Haitians, or ADOS from Tulsa, Oklahoma. If the Chinese, Mexicans, Ecuadorians, Indians, and Koreans get too buck, they get too contentious and too um, disruptive, the government would just take their assets and deport them to their home countries. We see what they're doing to Russian assets and U.S. banks. On the other hand, ADOS cannot be deported for three main reasons. Number one, this is our territory. Number two, it is harder to spy on us if we're in another country. Number three, they are afraid of ADOS enlightening and liberating other indigenous people around the world. We'd cause a lot of political problems. In 1998, the late Black American historian Renoka Rashidi was arrested and detained in Tiruvananthapuram, India, for participating in an Afro-Asiatic conference. In 1996, Louis Farrakhan had to ask the U.S. government for permission for the Nation of Islam to accept a $1 billion gift from Libya. 
courtesy of Muammar Gaddafi, the late president whose public torture and assassination was arranged by Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and the Israeli government, all because he wanted to work with other African nations to form the United States of Africa using gold-backed currency to fortify their own economy. So let's get into this article. Farrakh Khan asks to accept $1 billion gift from Libya. Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi offered $1 billion to Louis Farrakhan's Nation of Islam earlier this year to mobilize the oppressed minorities in the United States. Oppressed minorities means black people and maybe Hispanics. Now the Clinton administration, Bill Clinton, Zaddy Clinton, the first black president who played the saxophone, now the Clinton administration must deal with the possibility that he meant it. When Gaddafi made the offer, Libya's official news agency quoted him as saying, the nation of Islam will be a new weapon in the struggle against America, a breach to enter this, enter this fortress and confront it. Now, albeit he should have said that because... <laughs> That's too obvious. He should have said that because they were going to use that against him. But uh, such talk from a longtime nemesis and reputed sponsor of international terrorism is designed to put the government on the spot. Last week, the Clinton administration was asked by Farrakhan's organization for permission to accept Gaddafi's largesse. The Nation of Islam is seeking official permission to collect the $1 billion, which will require a waiver of strict U.S. sanctions against transactions with Libya. Lawyers also sought permission for Farrakhan to travel soon to Tripoli to accept a $250,000 humanitarian award from Gaddafi. So Farrakhan had to ask for permission to travel to Libya to accept $250,000 from Gaddafi. Farrakhan's requests create an election year quandary for the White House, which is anxious not to alienate black voters. The dependent black Democratic voters who called Bill Clinton, Zaddy Clinton, the first black president, they wanted you to keep voting for the Democrats and Clinton while behind the scenes sabotaging you economically. Because this $1 billion could have been used for banks, schools, education, businesses, so on and so forth, right? So Farrakhan's request create an election year quandary for the White House, which is anxious not to alienate black voters, but remains wary of frequent Republican criticism that President Clinton lacks foreign policy backbone. White House spokesman Mike McCurry would not be drawn on the issue Monday as the presidential campaign train made a stop in Arlington, Ohio. We don't think much of, of Libya, and there are things about Reverend Farrakhan's travels that we don't think much of as well, which is a lie, which is a lie. They have been watching us like a hawk since the 1960s and 70s, even before then. Side note. So I was um, talking to a detective for the NYPD months ago. And he told me that in every single NYCHA building in New York City, there is a camera feed to the police departments, um, the police stations. So they can monitor and surveil everything that you're doing. Whoever goes in the building, who comes out the building, what happens to these buildings, they are keeping their eyes on you in these tenement buildings. They know everything you're doing. But all of a sudden, we don't think much of Libya. And there are things about the Reverend Farrakhan's travels that we don't think much of as well. So we're irrelevant, right? Lies. Those are lies. This government has been surveilling us for decades, if not centuries. Okay, so in Washington, a State Department official reminded reporters of the administration's strong criticism of Farrakhan in January when he visited Libya Iraq, Iran, Nigeria, and other pariah states. Is Nigeria still a pariah state? Why are these states considered pariah states? Spokesman Nicholas Burns said at the time that Farrakhan was cavorting with dictators. Farrakhan was cavorting with dictators. Libya, Iraq, Iran, Nigeria, and other pariah states. Interesting. A Justice Department inquiry into Farrakhan's travels remains a pending matter said a spokesperson on Monday. It is against the law for a U.S. citizen to travel and spend money in Libya without permission. Whose permission? The government's permission. The same government you're asking for reparations for, you need to ask them for permission to do certain things, okay? Which is normal, right? Uh, we don't want U.S. citizens to be colluding with um, terrorists in other countries, right? Right, okay. 
So Farrakhan has made it clear that he will fight to accept Libya's money. I mean, $1 billion in 1996, $1 billion in 2024 could do a lot for an organization. Okay. I mean, you can do a whole lot. You can pay for schools. You can pay for uh, real estate, housing. You can pay for a lot of things, businesses, everything. So earlier this year, he did the U.S. government to prevent him from receiving Libya money. He said he was ready for a showdown. Um, Farrakhan, stop talking shit. He wasn't going to do nothing. If you're going to deny black people the help, the help of their own brother, then we're going to rise up against you, Farrakhan told the Chicago audience then. We don't have a damn thing to lose but our chains. Farrakhan was just talking shit. <laughs> because he was really serious, he wouldn't be alive to this day. He would not. He would have died just like um, Khalid Muhammad did five years after the date of this, this article. So Farrakhan told reporters that he would not be a Libyan agent. I'm an agent of God, and if the government requests that I should register as an agent of God, a.k.a. a church, I'll be happy to do so. So if you register as a church, you can accept monies from whoever. Okay. So the Nation of Islam representatives Monday would not discuss how they might spend Gaddafi's billion-dollar gift, but the Wall Street Journal reported that $400 million would be targeted for loan programs in banks owned by blacks, Arabs and Hispanics. Now, four hundred million dollars back in the day in '96. That's like what a billion dollars now, or maybe seven hundred, eight hundred million dollars now. Um, that was a lot of money back then, and that money could have helped a lot of financial institutions in the black community. But if you're helping out black businesses and black uh, banks and black schools and black communities, then you're supporting terrorism, because the U.S. government sees black Americans as terrorists. That's why they're surveilling us. In these big cities that's why they don't want us working with other people in different countries i just mentioned renoko rashidi earlier and how he was arrested and detained in india for just going to a conference he wasn't at a political rally he was just talking about the history of afro-asiatic relations in india that's all but he got arrested for that so the remaining 200 dollars 200 million will go to the nation of islam to pay for voter registration a foundation and various expenses they weren't going to be buying weapons. They weren't going to be buying, you know, uh, chemical agents. They weren't going to be doing anything that could cause harm, physical harm to anybody. So what's the problem? So whether Gaddafi has one billion dollars to give is another question. Years ago, he lent five million to the Nation of Islam, but it's unclear whether he could deliver one billion dollars from a country of five million people where oil the principal export generates an estimated nine billion a year. Now, the one billion may not have been a lump sum payment. He could have paid 100 million over 10 years. So I think he could afford it. Gaddafi, who fancies himself as a hero to the oppressed, takes satisfaction from challenging Washington, often against Libya in trouble. Now, earlier in the article, they said that um, Libya wasn't really on their radar. They weren't significant. They weren't a, a motherfucking factor. Remember that statement earlier? We don't really think about him about Gaddafi or Libya for that matter they're kind of irrelevant okay often against Libya in trouble twice in 1986 President Ronald Reagan ordered U.S. warplanes to attack Libyan targets and you guys know what happened in 2011 right the U.S. basically sanctioned a CIA coup against Gaddafi had him assassinated publicly and nobody was basically tried for it since that year since 1986 all Libyan assets in the United States have been frozen just like Russia's assets are being frozen currently because of this war in Ukraine. Financial dealings, contracts, and loans with Libya are generally prohibited according to the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control, which decides which exceptions can be granted. In 1992, the U.S., the United Nations imposed sanctions on Libya after Gaddafi's refusal to extradite two Libyan intelligence agents suspected in a 1988 bombing of a Pan Am flight in Lockerbie, Scotland. OK, so. What is the moral of this story? Beyonce was just paid twenty four million dollars to twerk in Dubai. OK, just meaning over the past year. The U.S. government, in my opinion, will not give ADOS reparations if it cannot guarantee that will waste the money on Popeye's chicken sandwiches, Jordan's, Tesla's, Hermes bags, etc. If we have any intention of using this money for economic empowerment, we are considered a threat to the system, period. 
Why do you think the most ignorant or apolitical celebrities in the world are the most successful? It is not because they're ultra talented. It's because they're not a threat. They are useful tools to empower the system. And once you become a threat by donating too much money to charities like Michael Jackson did, then they'll come after you with the character, the character assassinations or the physical assassinations. So this you, the U.S. government does not like to deal with competitors economically, militarily, culturally, etc. If black Americans receive billions in reparations, more than likely, if 1% of us takes that money and we decide to invest it in businesses and real estate and school and investment in, in companies and corporations and starting banks, then we're going to become a threat to the current status quo. There is a reason why we were stripped of our land and our power and our resources in the first place. It wasn't just because we're black. It's because our participation in the system is necessary for it to function. If we create our own banks and schools and businesses, then they can't exploit us the way they do. They can't. Most of our money is spent on white businesses. We don't spend that money within our communities. So imagine giving you the money that will pretty much liberate you from the system. They don't want that to happen. What was the point of slavery then? The point of slavery wasn't just, again, to, you know, force you to work and to take advantage of big booty black women on the plantations. That wasn't the objective. The objective was for them to create a system that can efficiently and sustainably extract your resources. That's it. So if you get reparations, you're going to threaten their system. They don't want you to do that. The U.S. government will rather give you money to do something ignorant than to actually build, create, and prosper. That is why rappers were getting all this money, for the most part. So we'll give you millions of dollars if you promote ignorant culture, right? We're not going to give you anything to empower you or enrich you. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enslaved you and subjugated you and oppressed you and sabotaged you for centuries now. I'm going to be reading several more articles in this series that pertain to this reparations issues because I'm not against reparations per se, but I think that we need to have more honest conversations about this reparations movement. Um, and we also need to have more honest conversations about how it is our responsibility, not this government's responsibility. It is our responsibility to clean up our own mess, period. Yes, the government has done things to us. I'm aware of that, but it's our responsibility to see the mess that they've created and to fix it on our own. Why would they fix the problem that they've created? They're benefiting from your dysfunction. They're benefiting from your lack of responsibility your lack of accountability, your lack of discipline. They're, they're benefiting from all this. Why would they give you the money to liberate you? That doesn't make any sense. It's not practical. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. I look forward to reading your feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon.